you see it? It's still don't have Bibles. So I don't know what year, but I'm still going to raise this up. And I'm still going to encourage you to bring your Bibles. Let's open up our Bibles in the book of Exodus. Say Exodus. Exodus. And I have uh, just a very special message that I just want to share with everyone tonight. I titled this sermon, Does God See My Hard Work? Can we say that together? Does God see my hard work? This is probably for me the best time of the year for us to reflect on the things that we have accomplished, that we were able to accomplish through the grace of God, the things that we know that we become good at, or also the things that we have failed to do. Can you hear that, man? How many of us here have set a goal in 2016? Some of them were able to achieve it. Some of them were not able to. Some of the things I would say I'm going to work on this year in 2016, some of it we became good at, some of it still needs improvement. Can you hear that, man? I believe this is the time of the year where we come together and just reflect on and ask God, God, how close are we to the goal that you have set us to do? How close are we to that? How close are we in achieving that goal that we set? Maybe it's personal, maybe it's ministry related, maybe it's just, just your personal goal. Because all of us have that. Sometimes also we cannot help but ask God, God, do you ever see my hard work? How many of you have been ever discouraged before at work? How many of you have ever been discouraged before when you feel like, God, I put in so much work into this thing and unfortunately it feels like it still did not come out the way I wanted to. It still did not return the way I wanted to. Still I'm looking for something that I thought it will, it will pay off this year. Can you hear that? How many of you can, can relate to what I'm saying tonight? Sometimes we cannot help but ask God, God, do you take notice of my labor? In 2016, God has said so many things. I said so many things in my life that I said, God, I'm going to do this for you. And at the end of the year, we, we ask God, how close am I? Do you even see the work that I've done? Let me encourage you this evening, River Faith Church. The answer is yes. God sees it more than we ever know. Actually, the Bible even tells us that even just a glass of water that you do in the name of the Lord, God takes notice of it. Amen. It is written in the book of life. He does not forget. But sometimes we're so tied in with the result, with the outcome, that we think that, oh, because it did not happen, maybe God did not bless what I worked really hard for without you realizing that God always notices it. Can I hear an amen? And not only that, this evening, that's, God does not only notice our hard work, but let me remind you that God notices it too when you are working too much. Can I hear an amen? You got quiet in the church. Let's pray together now. Father God, bless your message this evening, Lord, as we, Lord God, end this year with such an encouragement, Lord, that we know, Lord, that you are the God that takes notice, Lord God, of what we've done. That you are the God that takes notice, Lord, of what we labor hard for, for the glory of your Son, Jesus. And Lord, our prayer this evening, Lord, is as simple as this, God, that you may challenge us to look at things differently, Lord, in 2017, and to challenge us, Lord God, to be focused, Lord God, on the goal and the task that you have entrusted us to do, Lord. Not to look at someone else's, not to compare it with someone else's, but what you have entrusted us to do. Lord, this is our prayer this evening. 
as we pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. And in Exodus chapter 18, this is a very peculiar chapter. Because in this chapter, we know that Moses has been used by God to rescue the people from Egypt. And they were able to go and that's why the book is called Exodus because it is the exit of the people of Israel from Egypt going to the promised land. And now here Moses has seen the miracles and how powerful God is. He has seen how God has rescued the people in the hands of the Egyptians. But also Moses is now given this great task of this so many people Hundreds of thousands, some scholars say, that was exited out from that journey from Egypt to the promised land. And now Moses is in charge and was to judge over all these people. And here in this chapter, we will see that his father-in-law, say father-in-law, Jethro, say Jethro, paid him a visit and what it turned out to be a visit is it turned out to be a great visit because Jethro has given Moses a great advice about the struggles, about the pain, and about all these problems that sometimes go along with the work, with the Lord, with the ministry, and sometimes even we can apply it in our daily jobs. Can you hear an amen? amen? How many of you never experienced problem in your job? That's probably why, because you're not working. <laughs> if you never experienced problem in your job, that's probably you got laid off. Oh, you do not have a job. Because every time you go to work, there's some kind of challenges and trials that will go along with it. Can I hear an amen? amen. Well, Pastor, I'm so stressed with my work. Well, so stressed is this. It's called work. Okay? There's a part of it that's really going to go through that. And Moses is no exception. When he has given this task, Moses even stuttered. And Moses says, I can't, can't do this, God. And God says, no, I got you. You're the right person in this. And now Moses is looking at these hundreds of thousands of people. And Moses is thinking to himself, wow, what a great task now that I have to do. And there are times we are like that. We feel like overwhelmed with the job. We feel like overwhelmed with the task or whatever it is that we think that God, this is what you have given me, why is it just feels too much? That's because sometimes we need someone as Jethro to come in and remind us that no God sees your hard work. God sees it, God sees every tears, every sweat, every time, everything that you have put in, that labor of love that you put in the name of Jesus, the Bible says that work as if you are working for the Lord. When you show up at your job, don't just think of it as, oh no, this is just another day, another dollar. No, I'm going to show up here as if I'm working for the Lord itself. And there are times we experience that problem, there are times we experience that trial. And so is Moses. And let's open our Bibles in chapter 18, verse 7. Let's start with verse 7. So Moses. The Bible says here, so Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, and his father-in-law's name was Jethro. He bowed low and kissed him. They asked about each other's welfare. So they start catching up. They start talking to each other. Oh, how you been, Moses? I heard everything that God has done. What an amazing thing that you confronted the Pharaoh, you tell the Pharaoh, let my people go, and the Pharaoh changed his mind, and changed his mind again, and went back and forth, and finally, they let you go, but still he changed his mind, and chased you, but thank God, open up the waters, and just allow you guys to go through, and Jethro was just, his mind blown, and just saying, what an amazing God, that you are serving Moses, and the Lord says here in verse 8, Moses told his father-in-law everything the Lord had what? Had done. Has the Lord done anything in your life this year, River Faith Church? Yes. Has, any, has the Lord done any miraculous thing in your life this year, church? Go on and tell someone about it. It's a wonderful thing when the Lord has done something. And here, Moses is just 
can you meet it and tell it, General, General, this is what the Lord said. Can you imagine? This is what happened. It rained and this and that and all the plates and all the frogs in there. And Jeff was probably just his mind blown with everything that was happening. But also look what it says here. Moses told his father-in-law everything the Lord had done to Pharaoh and Egypt on behalf of Israel. He also told about all the hardship. Say hardship. Turn the person next to you and say hardship. Some Christians, they still live in this land and they think that when you become a Christian, it's just you stay in a place, the happiest place on earth. Can you name that? I want you to just bump the person next to you and say, wake up into reality. Can you name it? Wake up into reality. Nope. There are hardships and there are trials and there are struggles. When you work hard for the Lord in the ministry, even with just your personal jobs. Can I hear an amen? I gotta tell you about my first job. I work at soup plantation. How many have been to soup plantation? Only two, because I don't know Filipino audience nobody goes to. <laughs> right? Soup plantation. And the first night, I dropped a whole bucket of clam chowder soup. And my manager told me, you know that bucket costs about $80 or $90. And I'm like, how did it even start yet? I haven't earned anything yet, and now I owe them money. And good thing my, my manager told me, oh, no, no, you don't, no, you're not going to pay for it, but I just want to let you know that that's, that costs money. And I cannot tell you that night, I remember my parents telling me, oh, money go, doesn't grow on trees. You know, your parents used to tell you that, and every time I hear that, I laugh. But that night, that reminded me, I'm like, they're right. It wasn't easy. You gotta work hard, you gotta earn it. You gotta mop the floor, you gotta clean up, I'll sure you do it. Everything that goes with it, there are struggles and there's hardships. Can I hear you, man? And look what it says here. Jethro was delighted when he heard about all the good things the Lord had done for Israel as he rescued from the hand of Egyptians. And in verse 10, he says, Praise the Lord, Jethro said, for he has rescued you from the Egyptians. The Pharaoh, yes, he has rescued Israel from the powerful hand of Egypt. I know now that the Lord is greater than all other gods because he rescued his people from the oppression of the proud Egyptians. Now then Jethro, Moses, father in law brought a burnt offering sacrifice to God. We have to understand that Jethro is not an Israelite. He was pagan. But even then, because of the amazing things that just happened, you cannot help but to praise God himself and say, wow, what an amazing God you serve, Moses. Can I hear that, man? Do we serve an amazing God in Prophet George? Yeah. Yes, we do. Let's give a hand for God. Yes, we do. Through the pains and trials and the ups and downs, we serve an amazing God. Let's not forget about that. Amen. And in verse 11, when Moses' father-in-law saw that Moses was doing for the people, he asked, Oh, I'm sorry, verse 13. The next day Moses took his seat. So after they caught up, Moses says, Oh, hey, Pops, I gotta go back to work. <laughs> and Jethro was like, Okay, I'll watch you. Well, what do you do now? Now that you're the rock star here, you know, you just split open the sea and you just, everybody walking there and people must have loved you. But little did he know, look what it says here. The next day Moses took his seat to hear the people's <laughs> dispute. Now, that's a dirty job. Mary, Mary, Mary. How many of you want to just sit down and hear people whining? Right? That's why if you're not gifted, don't be in customer service. Can you hear me? How many of you have ever been to a drive through where that person is like, I don't want to be here? And you're looking at that person, why don't you show up to work? If you don't want to deal with people. Find a job that you deal with trees or with animals or with anything else. Can I hear you now? If you don't have to deal with people, don't find a job that deals with people. Yeah. And the Bible says there, Moses took his seat here, people's dispute against each other, and they waited for him from what? Morning to evening. Is that hard work? Yes, that's hard work. And 14, verse 14, when Moses' father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he asked, 
Moses, what are you really accomplishing here? Why are you trying to do all this alone while everyone stands around you from what? From morning till evening. How do you know that this kind of person, the person that I can do it all? There are times that we are like that. Can you hear me? Yes. We don't want to admit it, but there are times that we are exactly like that. I can do it all. I don't need your help. I don't need your help. No, no, I'll do it myself. And here's Moses, and we can never question the heart of Moses. His heart is really on serving God. His heart is really on dedicating his life to the Lord. There's no question about his heart. But there's something wrong with his application of how he's doing his work. We have to understand people that working hard, that just only means working hard. Right? Sometimes you, 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 your co-worker asks you, are you hard working or you're hardly working? Which one is it? Walking hard. Working hard? Walking hard. Walking. <laughs> Moses here, his heart is all the right thing, but he's not being effective. Why? Because he's trying to do everything. Let's say that together. Say, not everything. everything. How many of those people come up to you and say, "I'm tired," and the only thing you can think about is because you're doing everything. No wonder you're tired. And you ask, "How come I don't do this? How come I don't get to go to work?" Because you're doing everything. Is that God what we really wanted you to do? Is that God what we really wanted us to do? <coughs> to do everything the Bible says here. Why are you trying to do this all alone while everyone stands around you from morning to evening? Moses replied, Because the people come to me to get a ruling from God. When a dispute arises, they come to me and I say, I. I. People are hard working, they always start, always start with I. Are you ready, man? Well, I, well, I, this, well, I, this, well, I, this, I. How about we? How about us? Have you ever thought that maybe God's put people around you because they're not just for decorations? Maybe people are put around you because they are the people that God says will help you. But we gotta be this Superman. Are you ready, man? You know the problem with that sometimes, sometimes it is not the work that is hard. It is what makes the work hard. It's because of our pride, not asking for help. Do you know it? How many of you got really tired? We well, should have been if you just asked for help. Oh, I broke my back, Pastor. Why? Because I tried, you know, I was moving and carrying this big sofa couch made out of nada wood <laughs> by myself. Many of us were like that. We'd rather be, it'd rather be hard than just swallow our pride and say, I need help. Can you hear me, man? You know what I'm telling my kids right now? My kids, every time I watch something and it stop working, they will cry. And what did I will tell them, especially this bad help, I'll tell them, stop crying, ask for help. Is there any person in the room today that don't need help? Maybe your God that should start praying to you. We all do. And look what Jethro says. Verse 17. Jethro says, this is not good. Turn the person next to you and say, this is not good. Then the person next to you ask that person, are you tired? <laughs> if they say yes, say, this is not good. Ask that person, do you need help? <laughs> we all do. Jethro says, this is not good. Moses, Father, and Lord exclaimed, you're going to what? You wear yourself out and the people. This job is what? 
too heavy a burden for you to handle all by yourself. No wonder you're tired all the time. No wonder oh, you, you, you complain all the time about, you know, not getting sleep or this and that. Because sometimes we're just trying to do everything our selves. Can I hear you, man? Now, there's nothing wrong with working hard. I mean, there's something wrong with hardly working, but we're working hard. You know? But God does not just care about just us hard working. He cares about also us being effective in our work. Can I hear you, man? There are three things I just want to share with you guys tonight before we close our New Year's Eve service. Number one here. One thing that I noticed here is that Moses was working hard, but he was not working smart. I attended a conference this year, and the pastor tells us one thing that's very important and just stood out to me. He says, as pastor, sometimes you think you always got to work hard, but let me tell you this, do not just work hard, work smart. And I thought about that for a second, and I think about it, well, you know, sometimes in the church we kind of grew up and think that, you know, if you're doing work for God, it has to be hard. To verify that it is a work from God. Well, you know, a pastor that, you know, just, you know, climb three mountains to get to church and this and that. Well, that's the only choice they have. It doesn't mean that you go out looking for three mountains to say that it is a work from God. Can you name that? Sometimes we're putting in that we're just already pressured in the job that we're doing. We're putting more. <coughs> because we're trying to verify and says, oh no, we're not doing for the Lord, it's supposed to be this. There's already hardships and there's already pressures in the job. You don't need to go looking for them. Can I hear you? Amen. Moses here is probably thinking to himself, well man, I know it's hard, but it's for the Lord. And God is sending him. Someone that can relay the message and tell him, Moses, it doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to be the superwoman, I mean not superwoman, but superman. How many of you heard that song before, I'm not your superwoman? Right? There's no such thing. We all need help. We all need to understand that God not only want us to work hard, but he wants us to be also efficient in our work. Can I hear an amen? amen. How many of us still want to do the work that we want to do? How many of us still want to show up to church every Sunday? How many of us want to do more ministry, but we cannot do it anymore because we are so tired? Can I hear an amen? I got to blame people who just say they are tired. Yes, because you are doing it. Jethro is telling Moses here, Moses, I know that your heart is right in serving God, but you need to be smart about this. Let's continue reading. Look at verse um, 19. Verse 19. Look what it says here. Now listen to me and let me give you a word of advice. And may God be with you. What pretty much Jethro is saying, I'm going to give you a word of advice. Take it up to the Lord. And we'll see what the Lord says. It's okay to take advice, people. Can you hear amen? But at the end of the day, you need to take that advice and ask God, God, is this really what you want from me? Is this really your answer? And here Moses, a gentle telling Moses, here's my advice to you. Look what it says here. You should continue to be the people's representative before God, bringing their disputes to Him. Teach them God's decrees and give them His instructions. Show them how to conduct their lives, but... Say but. But, but. Select from all people some capable, honest men who fear God and hate bribes. Say delegation. What Jethro pretty much is telling Moses is delegate. There are things in your life that you can delegate. There are things in your life that needs balance. Can I hear you? How many of us can say amen to this? There are things in my life that need balance. 
I was at 97 and I, I remember my, what my instructor told me, bro, you can only juggle three things at the same time. Three things. Because you throw one, you put one on here, and then you catch one on the other, and then you throw one again. Only three things. You put more than that, there's a good chance you will drop one. Is your name it? And we all have tried it. Work, family, boyfriend, girlfriend, love life, God every now and then. And we try to juggle it and juggle it and juggle it. And just like what Jethro told Moses, you are going to burn out. Did you hear an amen? How many have been burned out before? How many have been burned out now? God also cares about our efficiency more than our ability. The question here is, do you have balance? As we reflect on 2016, going on 2017, here's our challenge this evening. It's still going to be more balanced than what we have now in 2016, in 2017. Is there balance in your family between work, family, and God ministry? Work, family, God, ministry. Of course, we all say God first, family, and then work. How are you going to balance those three things in 2017? Can you hear that, man? Because a little bit of too much of that is what you call imbalance. Sometimes we work too much. Forget about family. Sometimes we don't work at all. They just go family. And we're looking at our kids, they're all skinny because they don't have food in their plate. <laughs> Sometimes, oh, it's, uh, I'm just going to go, God, that's God. No, God says, even us as pastors, you know, in, in, in the book of Timothy, God says, if you cannot take care of your family, how could you take care of God's people? Yes. That's what the Bible says for us as pastors, is you got to take care of your family first. Because that's how... How will show how you can take care of your God's flock? So it cannot just be, oh, you know, I just show up to church every day, God. I'm not going to work. I'm just going to be with Pastor Ray. I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> no, there is a balance in everything. Can I hear anything, man? And God is saying, do that. Just work hard. Work smart. Do not just think about activity. Think about longevity. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Can you hear that, man? How many of you, of you train? You understand that? When you run a marathon, you just don't run 10 miles an hour the first mile. Guess what? You don't have nothing left for the next mile. What you do is you run smart. You conserve your energy. You put it together at the right time and you keep your pace. And you say, if I just keep my pace like this, then I will finish the race. Can I hear your name? Let's give back to our God this evening. Keep in mind that God wants us to finish the race. It's not a matter of getting ahead, people. Can I hear your name? You know, one time in the freeway, I was driving and I see this guy with a sports car and just going like this. Vroom, vroom, and there's just a, a slow traffic. How many of you see people like that, right? They just vroom, vroom, vroom. and I'm looking at this guy, and I'm just in my lane, driving the same speed, and this guy just vroom, vroom. but it's not going anywhere. <laughs> it's still in the same place. It's still in the same spot where I'm at, and he's trying to cut people off, trying to get ahead. And when the, when, the, when the freeway opens up, guess what? We exited at the same time. Oh <laughs> What's the point, people? Some of us work thinking that we need to get ahead. What God is saying, you need to finish. Amen. It's about getting ahead. There are people over oh, there, blew up ministry so hyper after two years. Now, I'm asking myself, I'm 32, God. 
I got a big head. I got a big long. What's that word again? Thank you, Jen. Good thing Jen is here. Longevity. Because I heard longevity. Some people say longevity. Long. Jeffy. Eyebrows or eyebrows? Just you. Can I hear the name of your faith church? God says, I want you to be efficient in what you do. Can I hear the name of number two? Look what it says here. Jethro gave what Moses, I know in your bulletin you got messed up, but Jethro gave what Moses was afraid to ask. And what is that? Help. Every now and then, we need to ask for help. Can you hear amen? Amen. Now, there's a big difference between people who knows how to ask for help and people who only ask for help. Okay? There are people that only ask for help. Those people are lazy. Can you hear amen? There are people that would ask you, they, they, even, they probably would ask you to, to give them a shower if they could. <laughs> Now, that's not the, 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 the prayer that I'm talking about. Can I hear name out? There's a difference between people who just always asking for help. There are people that just say, I need help. God says, you will need help. If God will give you an account to accomplish a task, God will give you a vision. God will give you a work. You will need people around you. Can I hear name out? I can never pass through just by myself. Never. And I will never claim that, oh man, it's all about me. It's this and that. I'm so blessed with this church because there are people that just stand up and say, Pastor, I want to help. Amen. Amen. Let's give a hand to everyone. People just finally understood that we're not doing this for each other. That we're doing it for the Lord. That God see our hard work, yes. But He also see when we are working too hard. God uses... Jethro to give an advice to Moses. To think about it, it's not a professional advice. Can I hear that, man? How many of you know someone that could use this advice? How many of you know someone that is just so tired, that is just so, the, the life is just, there's no balance. It's either just work, home, work, home. And sometimes we are that Jethro that God's going to use to say, wait, you need to look at this with a bigger picture. Sometimes it is not the work that is hard, sometimes it is our pride to ask for help. Can I hear an amen? We need to recognize that God that put people around us that will help us accomplish the task that He has given us. The challenge for us is simple. All we need to do is to recognize those people and come to those people and ask for help. It's easy. You know, the people that are successful, the people that gets the work done, they become very good at knowing how to ask for help. Can you hear that? All successful people, you ask them, did you get yourself here? They will tell you, nope. There are people around me. And that's what we call now what? Connections. Or have connections. No, it's not connections. It's that people that just put God that put around you so you can approach them. And it's not just about approaching them. It's these people understands when to ask for help, who to ask for help, and how to ask for help. Can you hear me, man? That's why I'm saying there's people that are just asking for help all the time. No, you gotta know when. You gotta know how. You gotta know who. Ask for help. Jethro told Moses, you need to find men that are what? Honest. That are capable. And that are what? That hate bribes. And then you come to them, you appoint them, and they will do the job for you. Do you hear them? We need to ask for help. And it's not, sometimes it's not just that asking for help thing, sometimes it's really the pride. Can I hear an amen? Lastly, we'll close with this. I know you heard this before, 
But let's look up verse 24. Let's look at your verse 24. And we'll close with this. Let's close with this. Verse 24. Let's read this together. Look what it says. Moses listened to his father-in-law's advice and followed his suggestions. So here it's in the Bible. It's good to listen to your in-laws. Every now and then, right? Amen? Nobody said amen. amen. <laughs> Verse 25. He chose what? Capable men from all over Israel and appointed them as leaders over the people. He put them in charge of groups of 1,150 and 10. These men were always available to solve the people's common disputes. They brought the major cases to Moses, but they took care of the smaller matters themselves. Soon after this, Moses said goodbye to his father-in-law who returned to his homeland. I know you heard this before, but I want to reiterate it tonight. Final point for tonight. This is really true, and this has always been true in our church. Teamwork always make the dream work. Can you hear that? Let's give that to our God this evening. This church will never work alone by just one person. River Faith Church, we gotta do things together. We always gotta do things together. You cannot train by yourself. You cannot just go by yourself. And here's just the challenge that I just want to leave with everyone tonight as we end this year tonight. I want all of us to end this year tonight with this simple question that we can all reflect on. And here it is. Are you part of a team. Are you part of a team? And what I mean by that is not only in the church, not only you know in sports, but also think about it. Are you in a team? In our marriages, I cannot understand people who get into marriage and still do things separately. And still do things their own. His and still hers. Where the Bible says two becoming into one. one. Meaning you will work as a, a team. As a team. A team so here's the challenge for us to reflect church this evening as we close to this. Are you part of a team? In your marriage, do you work as a team? Or do you still work individually? In your family, are you part of a family? Or you still isolate yourself and say, I don't need them. In your career, in your job, when you go to work, do you have this mentality of, oh, I just come here to get paid. Oh, I just come here, you know, I'm going to put in my hours, I'm going to leave home. Are you part of a team? In our ministry, in serving God, are you a know-it-all? Are you that I can do it all? Are you, are you the guy that, no, no, I don't need you. I do it myself. You know, I want it done right, I'll do it myself. No, teach it to others so they can know how to get it done right too. Can I hear that, man? I gotta tell you now, 2017, get involved. Get involved. Do something. There's a lot of people that say, Pastor, why don't we start this ministry? Why don't you start it? giving it to me. You thought about it. You do it. Why? Because things that are healthy are bound to grow. But let me tell you this, Reverend Victor, as we close, as we end this year tonight, if you are not part of a team, here's the only one thing that I can tell you tonight. You will get tired. You will wear yourself out and you will burn out. Because God never created anyone to be by himself. Amen. And that's biblical. Can you hear me? Amen? How do we know that? He created Adam. And the Bible says that God saw everything he made 
and created and he saw everything was good except for one thing you know what that is? Adam was by himself and God says that is not good for a man to be by himself 2017 are you going to isolate yourself? Are you going to cut yourself off from fellowship? Are you going to say, oh, you know what, I'll do it my way? Are you going to show up to work and say, no, I can do this, you know. I'll promote myself, I'll just come here and do my own thing and this and that. You will burn out. Here's an encouragement. River Faith Church, 2017. Let's do it together. Amen. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Amen. 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 Let's give that a call. What is a New Year's Eve without a toast, right? So I want all of us here tonight to have a toast together. Where are my toasters? <laughs> 2016 has been a great year. Can I hear that, man? How many of you can say amen to 2016? Right? Maybe we should be on top here. Come on, let's get, let's get our toes here. As we close tonight. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn that into wine. Watch. No, that's not wine. It's apple cider for people and things. That's... You can see it later. Come on, grab, grab, grab a glass there. Thank you. Take a glass again. Come on, let's all stand up. Roof Lake Church. What an amazing year we have. Can you hear that, man? And as we end, final day of the year, there's no place I'd rather be than to spend it with my family church. To God be the glory for everything that he has done in 2016 and for the new year that is to come. River Faith Church, I have one hashtag for you in 2016. Together. Amen. Together, River Faith Church. Amen. Cheers to you. Together, to God be the glory. Let's cheers to that, to the new year. Amen. Let's give it to our God this evening as I ask the worship team to come forward to Group Faith Church. In behalf of all the leadership here, Pastor Jay, Pastor Bert, we cannot thank you enough for the whole year that you have been so supportive, for the love and the support that you all have given us. Again, let me remind you, you don't have to be alone. You don't have to work alone. We're going to do it together and together in 2017. The hair they are? Amen. Let's give that to our God. Let's sing this final song. Let's finish this new, this year with a pack. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give glory to our God. Come on. Come on, let's give God the best black loafing we can offer. Amen. Amen. You know what?